Get so comfortable naming and claiming what your personal value is. This is like huge, mm. and it makes everyone uncomfortable because we really are taught to kind of like devalue ourselves. Like, don't think too much of yourself. Other people won't like it. Hey everyone, this is Kit Pang, your speaker coach and the founder of Boston Speaks. I am with Amy Young today, and I was going to tell you all what she does, but she does it better. So Amy, <laughs> what, do you, what do you do? Um, I am a life and love coach to single women. I teach single women how to unfuck themselves so that they can stop settling and get the love that they really actually want. Yeah, so you have to learn more about Amy on her YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And what do they have to type in? You just have to if type in... If you just in... search Amy Young, you're going to see a lot of this. So let's talk mm -hmm. about communication skills today. Most of us, when we're going into social engagement mm -hmm. types of situations, especially if we're connecting with someone for the first time, it's our knee-jerk response to go, I hope that this person likes me. I hope that they like me. I hope that they want to hang out with me again. If you're showing up at date one, right, most of us instinctively are approaching it from the perspective of, I really hope that this goes well, and I hope that I don't screw this up. When we go into a situation with that perspective, when we're bringing that, we're automatically approaching it from a place of lack, which is like, I need something from this person, which is automatically uncomfortable, icky, and unattractive. Yeah. So the best thing that you can do, and this is before you're even in the conversation, and there's some homework that you should do, like I would argue, like the night before you're going into date one, or the interview, or the networking event, is start getting really friendly and comfortable with owning and recognizing what you bring to the table. So it's not about, I need something from this person, it's about, wow, I have a lot to offer this date, this room, this situation, this company, whatever it is. So recognizing what your value is, what you bring, what your unique strengths and talents and gifts are, not being afraid to own that, and really, really trusting that that's going to come across. So it's not about if other people like you, it's about you liking you and wondering, hmm, you know, I wonder if I'm going to like them. I wonder if I'm going to enjoy this interview. I wonder if I'm going to have a good time at this event. So it's about taking the power back from that stressful place. Well, I, I hope all of you are liking this. No, but question <laughs> though, were you, you seem to me like someone who is very outgoing. Uh -huh. Were you always like this? No, I was like a really, well, I was a very shy child. Like I was very, I have like a vivid yeah. memory of being at like a ch friend's birthday party and like hiding behind my mom's legs. <laughs> and then at some point something changed. So let's say you go on video a lot. Yes. Do you think that helped you with your communication skills? In, Absolutely. In real life? What a great question. Well, you know, video is real life, but like real life. <laughs> real life. Like, yeah, in terms of, well, I think one of the biggest things that it helped me with was in video when you hit record, and anyone who's a content creator can relate to this, is you will stumble over a word and you go, oh crap, like oh, I messed yeah. that up, let me start over. And you could do that over and over and over again. And something that I think video kind of primes you for if you're creating content that then helps you in the real world is realizing I just have to roll with it. Mm. So if I stumble over my words, it's not a huge if issue. If I say the wrong thing, I can correct it. And that's another area that can produce a lot of stress when we're engaging with other people is going, am I sounding stupid right now? Am I saying this right? Is the point that I'm making clear? And then we get in our heads about it and then we're not present anymore, right? Yeah, yeah. Then we're like censoring ourselves and being like, this is already going poorly. And something that's helpful about talking to a camera for hours, as I have done <laughs> in my business, um, is that you realize, you know what, I could just roll with it. And the best thing that we can do is not take ourselves or our process so seriously and agree to have fun with it and bring a sense of lightheartedness to it. Do you think because of going on camera mm -hmm. so many hours talking mm -hmm. to this Just machine so much. that you became more authentic actually in mm. person or do you feel it depends on the situation? Yeah, because probably. Because you feel like on camera you can be yourself. I feel like I'm very right? much myself, yeah. Um, I don't know that it was really like one led to Two. the yeah. other necessarily, mm -hmm. but I think that it, uh, it helps. You know what I mean? Like I think that me feeling freed up to show up as my most authentic self online um, and having people respond to it positively is very nice. So then I feel more freed up and comfortable showing up that way with everyone, right? Regardless of what the relationship looks like. How, how can actually someone be confident and be themselves yeah. And if they, you know, it's like, okay, be yourself. Okay, how yeah. can I? Yeah, well, and it's interesting because it's like, well, be which version of myself, right? Because, like, this is another thing that I say about authenticity is it's not like a fixed formulaic thing. Like, I am who I am with my parents. I am who I am in an interview setting. I am who I am with friends and family. And I think it's um, important to really hone in on and get clear about what, like, the best version of you 
or the version of you that you most like to show up as. So like a, an assignment that I'll give to clients sometimes is like describe yourself when you're at your best. What are you mm. like? And people might say like, you know, I'm really energized. I'm in a good mood. I am willing to laugh more easily. I feel like I'm really present and just having fun. And then you want to hone in on those specifics and say, so how can I show up more as that person in these situations where I'm encouraged to be myself? So like I think a date is a great place. It's like being yourself doesn't mean that you have a crappy day at the office and then you bring that crappy experience into the date with you. It means that it's easy for you to access the most authentically enjoyable aspects of who you are and let that shine through. Because we can't show up as our most you know, vulnerable mm -hmm. or secretive or grumpy or cranky selves everywhere and expect that to go well. That's like really, really unrealistic. Yeah, and it's hard. Every, it is hard. Every single situation is completely different. It is really different, yeah. So if you had to give them one thing to work on, mm -hmm. let's say the communication skills, it's a lot. We're yeah. talking about a big thing, but if yeah. you had to give them one thing to work on in the next hour, mm -hmm. in the next minute, mm -hmm. or whatever it is, mm -hmm. what would you... Can I do two? Because yeah. I think that they're really to three. each other? Or four. No, this is two. <laughs> so we'll do two, eight. Two, so no. This is my eight-part no. system. So the two things that I would say is the first point that I made. Get so comfortable naming and claiming what your personal value is. This is like huge mm. and it makes everyone uncomfortable because we really are taught to kind of like devalue ourselves. Like don't think too much of yourself. Other people won't like it, especially women. It's true for men too, but for women especially, um, we're encouraged to really kind of like downplay our greatness. And I'm saying, girl, you go own your greatness. Like don't worry about it. The right people are gonna love it. They're gonna be attracted to it. They're gonna wanna see more of it. So like really clarifying that for yourself, um, and the other thing I would say is like right now, start being a lot kinder to yourself because it's like you said, social yeah, situations yeah. can be nerve wracking for people who have social anxiety or it's like we get tongue tied or like speaking at the event this morning, it's like my mouth gets dry and I'm like, oh my God, I hope that this is all making sense. If I'm beating myself up in my own brain as I'm in that process, it's only going to get worse, <laughs> right? It's yeah, only going to be more yeah. uncomfortable and I'm walking away and saying like, oh, I made that point that sounded silly. You want to be able to support yourself in those situations and to be kind to yourself in that process. Wow. Amy, I just want to say thank you so much thank for you so popping much. on camera really quickly. Anything else you want to, where can they follow you? No, um, my website is amyyoungcoaching.com. If you want to learn more about me, my work in the world, you can follow me on social media at amyyoungco. Bye. Bye.